What's growing on, gardeners? It's the end of January here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, and I know it's hard to believe because it's still winter, but February just may be the most exciting month in all of gardening because now is when we start most of our seeds for our spring garden. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you 32 different veggies that you can start from seed right now. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now I live in zone 8B North Carolina, but despite February being the shortest month of the year, there's a lot of variability within the month themselves. Things that you start from seed in the beginning of February is going to mature at a very different time than in late February. So I will do my best to break it down whether you live in a more mild climate or a colder climate. For the overwhelming majority of you, February is probably going to be the month where you're going to want to start these various seeds. We're going to begin this video by pulling out the big guns. Veggies one through five are your nightshades grown from transplants. So those are going to be your tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, tomatillos, and ground cherries. Now, as I mentioned, the overwhelming majority of people living in the United States are going to start their nightshade transplants at some point in February. However, there's a good amount of variability there. That is because most nightshades grown from transplant take about eight weeks from the day you sow that seed to the point that the transplants get mature enough for you to transplant out into your garden. So for somebody in zone eight like me and in warmer zones like nine, you're probably going to want to start your nightshades from transplant at the very beginning of February. That way they will be ready for transplant out in your garden probably at the end of March. For people in zones five and six, you're probably going to want to start your seed at the very tail end of February. That way they will be ready for transplant at the very end of April. And for people in zone seven, you're probably going to be somewhere in between. Now, these transplants that I have right here are some experimental tomatoes. And this is what you can expect them to look like about one one month after you sow that seed. So these can easily be up potted into a three by three inch container and you can easily go another month. And I will show you what that will look like. Now what you see right here is a tomato transplant that is about two months old. It's in a four inch by four inch pot. It's a lot more substantial. This would be probably beyond the size that you'd want a tomato transplant to be. In fact, it's already starting to flower. You generally don't want to see your tomato transplants flowering before you transplant them out into the garden. That means that they're root bound and stressed. Uh, that being said, this is more just an example. I'm planting these way too early just to have as props for making videos like these to help inform you. The other nightshades like your peppers, eggplant, tomatillos, and ground cherries, they're pretty much going to follow the exact same transplanting schedule as your tomatoes. For the most part, they're all going to mature about eight weeks after you plant seed. However, it's not a big deal to get them out a little bit earlier than that. It is is a bigger deal to push them beyond a certain size where they tend to get root bound. They won't appreciate being transplanted if they get more than say eight weeks old after germination. So please keep that in mind when timing out your individual transplants. Veggies six through 10 that you should plant in February are going to be your direct sown frost tolerant root vegetables. And those are going to be beets, radishes, carrots, parsnips, and turnips. Now all of these plants, because they're root vegetables, they do not like being grown from transplant. Therefore, you're going to plant the seed directly into the ground. Most people in, in the United States are going to plant these directly at some point in February, but your location is going to dictate how early in February that's going to be. Now, one thing you have to factor in with these seeds is that they're going to take about 10 to 14 days to actually germinate. So whatever your weather is at the time, by the time they break through the ground, you have to think of what the weather is going to be basically two weeks further down the road. So here in North Carolina, Carolina, our hard frosts and freezes generally stop in March. So if I were to plant my seeds out directly into the ground at February 15th, by the time they actually germinate, it's probably going to be pretty close to the very end of February or beginning of March. And for people in colder climates than I have, uh, most of the ground in the United States is going to be thawed by the end of February. So if you were to plant those seeds in late February, they're going to germinate probably sometime in the middle of March. And then most of us are seeing a lot less frosts and freezes. 
Yes, for people that are in extreme northern tiers or very cold climates, you may not be able to direct sow some of these things in February, particularly beets, because they do tend to get burnt back when temperatures drop below 25 degrees. Overall, the majority of people are going to start planting these things out in their garden at some point in February because they tend to not handle the heat of the summer very well. So it's generally advisable that you plant these in such a way that you harvest them all before it gets too hot. Veggies numbers 11 through 17 are brassicas grown from transplant, and they're going to include cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, chard, collard greens, and mustard greens. Now, timing is everything when it comes to these veggies, so if you haven't started them yet, you may need to really get a move on depending on where you live. That's because the brassica family of vegetables are very sensitive to heat. Temperatures above, say, 75 degrees or so can really make them tough, woody, and bolt in the short order. So they actually grow best when daytime highs are in the 50 to 60 degree range. Now, brassicas are all tolerant of frost and freeze. However, some of them are more cold tolerant than others. Generally speaking, it's going to be safe to plant brassicas out into your garden as long as you're not going to see any temperatures below, say, 22 degrees Fahrenheit or so. And it will benefit you to cover them with some kind of frost blanket or some kind of cloth if you think it's going to drop below 28 degrees. So that's really the decision that you have to make when you're timing these things out. Now here on the Carolina coast, I generally find that I need my brassicas to be harvested by about May 1st. So for that reason, I've actually already started my second wave of brassicas that you see right here. This is broccoli and cabbage and mustard greens for the most part. So it's generally better to be a little bit early with brassicas and fight the cold than it is to be a little late and fight the heat. Now the overwhelming majority of the country is a little bit behind me. So for that reason, it will be just fine for you to start your brassica transplants indoors right now. They'll be ready to plant out into your garden about six weeks after you sow the seed. These brassicas germinated about a month ago and they are pretty much ready to go, but we have a big cold wave coming over the next two weeks, so I'm going to delay and let them hit the maximum six weeks of maturity before I plant them out. For you folks in very southern regions like South Florida or South Texas, if you haven't started your brassicas yet, you really need to get a move on. It's going to start getting warm very quickly in your region, and if you do decide to start things this late, make sure you have shade cloth on hand to finish your brassicas under so they do not flower and go to seed on you before they are mature. Veggie number 18 is for the gardener that's really looking for a challenge, and that is celery. I have tried growing celery twice, and I have failed both times. I'm hoping the third time is the charm. Now, since I haven't been successful growing celery, I can't tell you exactly what to do, but I can tell you what not to do. First off, the biggest tip I can give you is celery seeds have a long germination time. You're going to need to start them 21 days ahead of germination indoors. That's right, they take three weeks to germinate indoors. Then you're going to need about another six to eight weeks to turn them into sizable transplants. So it's probably going to take something like three months of preparation to really get the celery going. Second, celery is a cool weather season crop. However, it is not extremely cold hardy. So the real challenge is these need to mature when it's still fairly cool out, but they can't take those hard freezes. I transplanted celery out into my garden last fall, and they did fine with the light frost and freezes, but once we hit 26 and 27 degrees Fahrenheit, those two back-to-back -back nights killed off all of my celery transplants, so they just can't take those hard freezes. So here's the tips that I'm going to give you when it comes to growing celery. Make sure you give ample time for germination and get the those transplants as large as you possibly can before you put them out into your garden. Then transplant them after the hard freezes are over, but while it is still lightly frosting. If you're going to get a light frost, cover them so they're not exposed. This will give you the maximum cool season for them to grow in your garden. Then chances are in most climates, it's going to get too hot for the celery too quickly. 
get yourself some 40% shade cloth, drape it over the celery plant so they can finish in an artificially shady, cool environment. That's the only thing I can tell you. I'm also growing this variety called Chinese Pink that I got from Baker Creek. It's supposed to be one of the easier varieties to grow, but it's still given me one heck of a challenge. So start with this maybe, or look for other good varieties for beginners, and then just it's going to be a lot of timing and trial and error. But once I nail this, I think it's really going to be worth it. Veggies numbers 19 through 22 are your frost tolerant direct sown crops and those are going to be peas including English peas, snap peas and snow peas, your direct sown leaf lettuces like you see right here and also broccoli rob also known as rapini and arugula also known as rocket. Now all of these things generally speaking tolerate frosts and freezes but they like being direct sown out into the garden they don't like being transplanted so for example these red leaf lettuces like you see right here they like being grown closely together in tightly knit rows they don't do well as transplants because they grow more as a row crop than a heading crop Peas are frost tolerant, but they just can't tolerate the hard freezes. Timing is everything when it comes to growing peas. These are leftover peas that I planted in fall, but I mistimed them by about three weeks. I planted them too late. They didn't start flowering until it started getting too cold here. And as a result, you can see how burnt up these plants are. And for that reason, I'm probably just not going to get any kind of harvest off of them. Now it's difficult growing fall peas because you have to plant them when it's still pretty hot and hope that you get a long Long enough fall before the hard freezes set in to get a harvest it's a lot easier to plant them out in the late winter early spring and then harvest them in the mid to late spring so generally speaking I plant my peas at the end of February so they germinate in March when the frost and freezes for the most part stop and then I can get a really good harvest out of them in May uh, before it gets too hot that is generally what I recommend people do. I think these make overall a fantastic spring crop. Now, arugula and broccoli rob, on the other hand, they germinate very quickly and they grow very quickly and they are very sensitive to heat. And when I say heat, I mean temperatures of 70 degrees can stress them out and cause them to bolt. So these are an exclusively cool season vegetable. Now, both of them are best sown directly in rows and they like growing together very tightly. So I sowed these a couple weeks ago and they they are already up because it gets so warm so quickly here in the southeast I need to harvest all of these things by April because it just gets too hot so I want to be able to actually start harvesting my arugula and broccoli rob in late February and throughout March that's the only way I'm going to get a good harvest on these very heat sensitive plants so for that reason plan accordingly Veggies 23 through 26 are your annual transplantable herbs, and they include basil, parsley, cilantro, also known as coriander, and dill. Cilantro, parsley, and dill are all tolerant of cold, but they don't do very well in heat. Cilantro is by far the most heat sensitive, and I actually like to direct sow these. They germinate very well in cold soil, and they really love the cold temperatures. We're talking 10 degrees Fahrenheit, doesn't really bother cilantro. They will recover even if they get a little bit burned. So you have the flexibility to grow cilantro either as transplants or direct sown. The only thing you need to know is you need to get it in when it's still cold because once it starts getting into the 70s, it's going to bolt on you. Dill is not quite as cold hardy. I've had good luck growing dill all the way down to around the 22 to 25 degree range, depending on the duration of the freeze. This dill, I actually sowed directly from seed, but it will grow better from transplants and then you transplant it out into your garden once the hard freezes stop in the late winter early spring. This is going to get pretty banged up over the next few days as we get an arctic blast. Now parsley on the other hand that is very cold hardy. These are some parsley seeds that I sowed directly and they did germinate but they are really struggling. I strongly recommend you grow parsley indoors from transplant. Uh, parsley is fairly sensitive to heat but it can grow all summer long if you put it under shade cloth or move it into the shade. Basil, on the other hand, is extremely sensitive to frost. Even the lightest frost will kill basil completely, but 
basil germinates in about the same amount of time and takes about the same amount of time to grow as a transplant as a tomato or a pepper plant does. So for that reason, I always start my new basil plants for the next season at the same exact time that I start my tomatoes. They also love the same temperatures. Basil can really take a lot of heat in the summer, and while it can't take a frost or a freeze, it doesn't mind temperatures in the upper 30s, 40 degrees or so, for a very brief period of time, as long as it comes back up during the day, just like a tomato or a pepper plant can briefly tolerate as well. So I like to group all of those things together, and they all get interplanted out together in my garden once the frosts and freezes stop in the spring. Veggies 27 through 31 are your alliums, and that includes onions, bunching onions, garlic, shallots, and leeks. Now, while these are all very cold hardy vegetables, they don't necessarily grow the same. So depending on where you live and what you want to grow, some of these you may be running out of time if you want them to be successful. Now, leeks and bunching onions, for example, you can grow them 365 days a year. I grow them all throughout the summer, all throughout the winter. They're very cold hardy. They're very heat tolerant. And the reason why you can grow them all throughout the year is because your leeks and your bunching onions, we're eating them for the greenery. We eat the green tops of the bunching onions as spring onions, and the leeks, we eat the white central part, which is in between the roots and the green tops. You eat that middle of the stem. So for that reason, it doesn't really matter what time of year Year you grow your green onions or your leeks because you're just eating the vegetation of the plant. Onion, shallots, and garlic, on the other hand, have to be planted at very specific times of the year. That's because we harvest them for the bulbs, not the greens. And the bulbs grow based on the length of the day during the spring and summer. The longer the days when they mature, the better bulbing you're going to get. So for that reason, I have to start my onion and shallot transplants that you see right here very early because they are sensitive to day length. Now here in North Carolina, I have found that I need to start my onion and shallot seeds right around Christmas time. That way the plants are ready to go out into my garden as transplants either the last week of February or the first week of March. That way they will start Start developing nice big bulbs in May when the day length is at absolute maximum and then I can harvest them in June which is right around the summer solstice that's when I get the biggest bulb development when they're ready for harvest right around the maximum day length of the year now if you are in a more northern tier than I am and you can't plant out your onions that early that's generally not as big of a deal because the days are so much longer in the summer at higher latitudes so it all kind of works out now I have made numerous different videos in the past that show you exactly how to grow onions and how to select varieties based on day length. I'll make sure to drop a link in the video description that shows uh, 25 plants that you can start in January. That was last month's video where I gave you a lot of information on growing onions and shallots. Growing garlic is similar to growing onions, but with one additional requirement. They also need lots of chill as well. So not only does your garlic bulbs need to mature in late spring, early summer when days are very long, but you also need to accumulate a lot of cool chill hours on the bulbs when you plant them in the soil. So here in the southeast, because we don't get very much chill in the spring, I have to plant my garlic out in November. So they sit in the soil all throughout December, January, and February and they accumulate all of those cool weather hours to get good bulb development. Then I'll be able to harvest them in late May, early June, and I get nice fat bulbs. So if you live in the southeast or the deep south and you haven't planted your garlic yet, you are running out of time because the amount of chill hours left in the season is getting really small. If you haven't planted your garlic yet, you are going to have to grow soft neck garlic because they require less chill than hard neck garlic. Don't even bother with hard neck garlic this late in the season because hardneck needs way more chill than softneck varieties. Now if you live in a much colder climate than I do, like the upper Midwest or very far inland, where it's still cold all throughout April and May, you can probably still plant garlic in the late winter, early spring once the ground falls because you'll still get months of cool weather. So for you in very northern tiers, you may be able to still plant garlic if you haven't already. So when you plant garlic basically has to be fine-tuned to your location, but no matter what, you need them in the ground when it's still cold out to accumulate that chill and they need to mature in the late spring, early summer when the days are still nice and long. 
and veggie number 32 that you should start in February are your warm season lettuces. And when I say that, I mostly mean your romaine types. Now, a common mistake that gardeners make is thinking that all lettuces are cold hardy, and that's just not the case. While the red leaf lettuces tend to be very cold hardy, your romaine types tend not to be. In fact, any more than a light frost can really damage romaine. I can't grow romaine out in my garden in our winters here in North Carolina. It's just too cold. This is a variety of romaine called Giant Caesar that I have growing in this pot that's going to be ready for transplant very soon once the temperature starts moderating. Romaine types are actually much more heat tolerant than your leaf lettuce types. They don't bolt as easily. So while I need to harvest my leaf types of lettuce in the winter time, my romaine, I actually get the nicest heads around May 1st to May 15th, believe it or not. And you can actually grow a lot of these heat tolerant varieties of romaine all summer long if you grow them underneath shade cloth. Cold is more the enemy of your romaine types than heat is, especially when you use shade cloth to your advantage or you plant them in partial shade or maybe even full shade in the dead of summer. So believe it or not, you actually need to look at your romaine types of lettuce as more a summer crop than a winter crop. So that's why I had to break these up and give them their own little segment. I love of growing romaine lettuce. It's by far my favorite type of lettuce, and it's taken me a long time to figure out the eccentricities of these different types of lettuces. And this variety, Giant Caesar, is really one of the best, most heat tolerant varieties I've found, and I highly recommend it. And that right there are 32 different veggies that you can plant out in your garden in February. Now look, this isn't a list of every single thing on earth that you can plant out into your garden in February. These are just the most common items that you can quickly run in a Home Depot and grab some seed packets of or easily find online that we popularly and commonly eat here in the United States. There's tons of other things that are more obscure out there. So this is just a guide to get you started and get you motivated because now is the time to plan for spring. And even though it is still winter, believe it or not, because there's so much hope on the horizon, this is one of my favorite times of the year. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you have any questions about the veggies that I mentioned in this video, ask them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, they are all linked down below in the video description in my Amazon storefront link. So if you expand the video description, click on the Amazon link. You'll see everything I use in my garden in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. We have a brand new toy for Dale. <laughs> it's a big, long, squeaky snake and we were just playing tug of war. Come on, come on, get it. Get... Dale, come on, you were just playing tug of war like crazy. Wanna... Now that the camera's on, come on. What is this? Get it. Get it! There we go! Yeah! Come on! Oh. No, what kind of half-hearted attempt was that? Oh, now that the camera's on, Dale's no fun. Oh, I don't want to play on camera. Turn the camera off and I'll be so much fun, Dale says. Oh, you. All right. Maybe later. Ugh. So disappointing. So disappointing. You stinker. You stinker.